if you get a, if you get a chance, you should check out. I've been doing interviews with um Professor Chandra Wick Robinson. You know the, the famous astronomer. He wrote books with Fred Hoyle in the eighties. No, you know, you know Sir no. Fred Hoyle. Yeah, I know Hoyle. Yeah, I've been doing interviews with him for a few years about comets and, and asteroids and meteors and all of that. If you ever get a chance <coughs> to check out the, those interviews. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a, big He's a, fan, he, if you ever... a big fan of Cosmic Catastrophe. I have a, a Reddit titled Cosmic Catastrophe, and a lot of people think I'm a conspiracy theorist. And they don't understand that there's peer-reviewed information on all type of cosmic uh, events that occur – that change society and uh, Haley's comet changed society. And we have like solar proton events. One of them called the Charlemagne event that happened about a thousand years ago that Rex and I think that we're looking at here in the Southwest and some of the petroglyphs with the squatter man and other glyphs like Jacob's ladder. These are all plasma no. discharge glyphs that uh, a PhD, uh, Anthony Peratt at Los Alamos, was doing plasma experiments, extremely top secret and at very high level uh, back in the 70s and 80s. And for some reason, he walked into a conference about petroglyphs and they were talking about the 30% of unknown petroglyphs on earth. And he was like, oh my God, he thought it was a setup because he actually had created all of these figures in high uh, electrical environments at Los Alamos labs. So it became really dicey waters. And then he was introduced to uh, Dave Talbot at the, uh, with the electric universe and the Thunderbolts project. And, and now we have that whole idea that ancient man worldwide witnessed plasma discharge events in the heavens. And it's was proven uh, indirectly at Los Alamos and it got kind of hushed up and shut up. And they made uh, Peratt say that he has nothing to do with the electric universe back in the early days. But it's very clear to millions of people now that we've been lied to about all types of things. I mean, just the megalithic history and the fact that anyone thinks that Egyptians built the pyramids, uh, well, they, they would believe that uh, mud fossils are real as well. And that are, those are my two cents. <laughs> let, let me yeah. jump in on that real quick. So this is the paper you're talking about, the Anthony Perot Z pinch instability yeah. Z pinch. This is fascinating. I think this is the whole one of the holy grails of papers that puts together this ancient knowledge of petroglyphs that natives from around the world seem to etch in stone at a certain time. And Diamond, we have uncovered some of the most amazing petroglyphs in the world, I believe, and in the Four Corners region, and a lot of similarities that we could link around the world. And we're going to talk about that. And folks, you know what? We should we should talk about it now, Diamond. Let's talk this to, in the future. At, let's get into this, because I'm going to put this into a series of podcasts. Yeah, well, The I red and blue kachina. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before I forget, yeah. before I forget, the red and blue kachina, yeah. Venus, Mars, and the battles between Venus and Mars, folks. Hello, yeah. mic drop, please. Yeah, yeah. if you're in Diamond, if you're if you're in the Northeast, you should check out some of the ones in the in the Gungiwamp area of Connecticut. No, I there's, used to uh, I used to live there, but I escaped from that shithole. Could, yeah. Hey, hold I'm real quick, right. real quick. Describe this for us, Diamond. This is what I want you to describe for us. So the <laughs> squatter man. We've seen the squatter man <laughs> depicted in so many petroglyphs. Well, no, and let's is no, this... no, go back to that last one, Rex, so we can explain why auroras occur. The back one where you, they showed the earth. Okay. Right here. Yeah, yeah the very yep. beginning. Here we go. Yeah, there. Oh, wow. So, this is awesome. So, look, uh, the whole idea of Electric Universe and Thunderbolts Project or plasma cosmology is that everything is uh, connected through Birkeland currents. And the Birkeland currents in Earth, we can clearly see, we can prove that they exist on all planets in our solar system. The same auroral belt, belt happens on Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and any planet we look at. And so here on Earth, about 18 degrees south of the equator is a range. Venus. <laughs> is this Venus? Okay. Is this Venus? It's the same. It doesn't no, I'm, matter. I'm saying. I, I'm saying. I wonder if. It, I wonder if it's. Venus. I was Ven saying. I wonder if it's Venus. No, this 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 is probably Earth here, um, but if you go up into the the reason auroras occur is because the Berkeley current is a cylindrical object 
with filled with energy that's coming from the sun that connects to the earth through the pole. And about 18 degrees south of the pole is where that cone connects. So that's where you have the energy coming in and out. It flows wow. through the central core. And then at the equator, it erupts at the equator and wraps back around. And that's what it call what, what causes uh, all of the weather on earth. So it's an electrical circuit. And that's why the, uh, jet stream occurs and that's why uh so can, everything can is, i ask you can i ask you a question yes well what, what what's your opinion on because um you know aquatic animals they make waste product of ammonia right and we got a lot of ammonia in the in the atmosphere of venus what do you think do you think venus could have been a comet at one time maybe or something like that or do you think like because uh I don't, I don't think that we have any explanations of why certain things and even recently they found that there's certain <laughs> elements in the atmosphere of venus that are only found in like penguins poop yeah well i think venus so was, that's really interesting yeah venus was uh, ejected from the red circle on jupiter uh, as jupiter's core destabilized in uh recent geologic history there was an ejection of a core piece of jupiter that is uh, well documented in the historical past. And Venus did a flyby and almost killed everyone on Earth. And it gives us a lot of the biblical stories. And Venus has recently put in its orbit probably within 10 to 50,000 years. It's anyone's guess how close it, it could be as recent as 8,000 in my opinion. But I think it's more in the realm of 10 to 50,000 years, because I think that uh, the pyramids and the Sphinx were built around 26,000 to 20,000 yeah. to, to 22,000 years ago. And that this breakup happened prior to that. So if, in fact, this is where Venus ejected from here, the big red hole in Jupiter and and it, it's wow. Completely explainable by all of uh, geometries in all of uh, astronomy. So the, the the circular orbit of the object Venus. It, that's it's way, that's it's, what Velikovsky said. It's way that's too, basically what Velikovsky said too. Yeah, because if it was around for longer than a million years, it would have a extremely elliptical orbit that was very predictable, and it would even precess. And I don't think Venus processes at all like Earth, which what I mean by that is that the rotational axis wobbles uh, like my arm is yeah. moving, moving around. And our precession of the equinoxes, according to Milankovitch in the 1947 theory, is uh, that it's a 26,000 year wobble, which corresponds to the precession of the equinoxes of the, uh, well, we all know about the astrological side. I think Venus spins like like a like a tire spinning the opposite way. It's like it spins in reverse sort of, I think. Yeah, it's completely Let me jump in real quick. So, Di yeah. Diamond, you think that Venus is less than 50,000 years old? It, it it would have to be based on all of the astronomical information we have about it. The, the heat is wrong in the position it's at. Uh, the, and as Ra said, the rotation is incorrect and it's just way too hot and way too circular of an orbit. It, it can't be an accident. So the, the only way you could have it accidentally like that is if maybe it interacted with something else recently. But even if you hit something, why would that create it to become in such a circular orbit? The orbit is fresh. And what that means is, that, look, if I shoot something at the sun, the sun is freaking gigantic. If I shoot anything at the sun that has a magnetic field, the sun's going to capture it and it's going to immediately bring it into a perfectly circular orbit, which is exactly what Venus is doing now. So that means it's been recently captured. Now, that means geologically recent. So 50,000 years, a million years is geologically recent. But based on historical accounts on Earth and stuff we, we, we you and I know about and the Thunderbolts Project and, and accounts in antiquity, it can't be a million years ago. It has to be pretty recent. So that's why I say 50K. Well, that would be interesting because when I think about the mythologies, 
that describe, this is a pretty cool image, I think, of the size of the sun in comparison to the Earth and Jupiter. So you can see just some of these small sunspots. These are pretty big up here, but those sunspots are about the size of Jupiter, and Jupiter is massive. The diameter of the sun is about 109 times the diameter of Earth. So put that into perspective. And then when we were looking at the, um, we were looking at the size of the spot on Jupiter versus Venus. When you look at the mythology, so mythology is ancient history that has been, yes, mistranslated oftentimes and, and disinformation is in there. But mythology itself to the ancients was is a form of science. And the term mythology itself has been changed to be something that people look at as untrue. There, depending on how you you talked about language earlier and how we have more languages now than ever, that's going to make things more difficult. Also, there was that one point where we could communicate telepathically, where we we knew what we were talking about because we didn't have to talk about it. We knew we were communicating. There wasn't that miscommunication. The yeah, the, it was knowing. There wasn't that disconnect. <laughs> well, now so we got all of these different no, opportunities. We gotta, Rex, we got who needs who needs telepathic when you got instant messaging. <laughs> we got to jump. <laughs> What? We got to we got to jump off a cliff here and talk about who the Anunnaki were and what that means to language, because I think that the gods uh, were telepathic at the same time that humans on Earth were telepathic, and that we were all coexisting at the same time, and that when we come into some of these. So we're entering a new magnetic excursion. So sometime in the future, we're going to get to a point where other realms can enter Earth. That's my belief. So we have to get to this cosmic uh, level, right? Cosmic rays have to come to such a point where our magnetosphere wanes enough that the fifth dimensional creatures can join us on Earth. And that happened back in the past. And it corresponds... I think it has to do with harmonic. Go ahead. What did you say, Rob? I think it has to do with harmonics. Like we're, I think we are, we're living on a harmonic energy field. And I think it, it, you, there's certain, certain, yeah. uh, like an eight hertz states. Once you get to like an eight hertz meditative state, you could sort of peer into those higher harmonic fields. Yeah, but you don't need to be taught that. So what I think is that the earlier graphs Rex was so, showing on that yeah. 20, 2019 paper, when the magnetic field weakens so much, the amount of cosmic radiation does either one of two things to a human body. And we already have proven this. We know what it does. If cosmic radiation will cause you to go insane, it's called the full moon effect. And it will literally cause you to shoot up the, the world. And that's people that can't accept what's happening to their DNA. It's changing. But other people, and, and some of them call them yeah. uh, indigos. I, I believe I'm one of them. I had a download back in 2012 where all the questions I ever had about the cosmos were answered in an instant as I was looking up at Sirius. And this is after a three-year period of cleansing and organic food eating, meditating, and being celibate. And I had this download and it changed my life. And that's the only reason why the Oppenheimer Ranch Project exists. The same time it happened is when this happened the next day. And I'm here now because of that event. And so, and, and I, and hunt, and, and, and then weeks later, Anthony, have similar stories. Anthony Talbot from the uh, Thunderbolts Project contacted me because I started posting on social media and he said, I want to know what happened. And then I, I sat down with him and he said, there are hundreds of scientists like you that have had these downloads and events that have happened to them over the last 10 years. And it's all coming from above. And he was running it. And then guess what happened to Talbot? I agree. He had, he had a stroke and the book never came out. So. It's Let me jump in real quick. Yeah, and that sucks. That sucks about his book. Yeah. But let me jump in on that real quick because. When you look at this information from the ancients and these rituals and rites and Sumerian tablets and stories and mythologies and the way that the ruling class would attempt to mimic the stars and the planets and the constellations, the orbits, etc., there is a knowledge base there. And you're speaking of frequencies and harmonics and downloads. There was a time where they could look at the stars and the stars would give them information. The planets would give them information it's, it's, and in a way that it, was, it would be almost telepathic communication. 
So now we're looking at it in a completely different mindset. And that experience that you had, Diamond, I think verifies that. And what I would like to know, you brought up something fascinating to me a moment ago about the Berkman Current when you were describing how it reached the 18th degree of the earth. Is that right? Is that what you said? Yeah. I okay. Mean, so the Berkman Current reaches... What could could we harness that energy? Is there like a secret base there? Um, where is that at exactly on the earth? I'd like to see that. Oh my God. Now this is uh, really important information, dude. Um, you don't want to be there. So like literally if you're up in the Northern territories, uh, when there's a huge space weather event, when a CME is coming towards us and there's massive Aurora, if you were actually standing there, it would be like at the dentist office with a, a dental x-ray times 50. You don't want to be there. You're literally going to die of cancer in a moment. And so this is what was happening in antiquity. If we could amplify that by a, a factor of 10,000 times, the Atlanteans, when they were up there, when the event occurred, they all were dead on an instant. Very few escaped. And, and the whole ideas of Hyperborea being up at the North Pole, uh, let's say 26,000 to 16,000 years ago before the, uh, p the maximum glaciation, if that was actually a place up there at the North Pole and there was access to inner Earth or whatever, if anyone was up in Hyperborea up at the North Pole during the cosmic catastrophe and they didn't know because it's a 26,000 year cycle that they had only been studying that just revealed itself, they were all dead in an instant. Can you imagine? Uh, and the reason why in Greenland and in Europe, and, and we have these uh, stone structures th that are like coffins. This is where people lived. We have underground cities throughout Turkey, all over the world that are potentially twelve to 16,000 years old. These were all created so that humanity could survive during the cosmic catastrophe that was literally irradiating the surface. So when the sun came out, if you went out on the surface to get food, goodbye. And, and it, it was very quick. It's a quick learning curve. You learn real quick to don't go out during the, when the sun comes up. And, but you, it, when the sun went down, you could go out. And, and this then explains to us all why the moon-eyed people exist, the ant people exist, and all these underground small hominids exist, including proven Homo floriensis within the last five years. So I, my hats are off to all the idiots that claim that they're scientists like Neil Tyson deGrasse that don't know anything about all the things I talk about in the last five years, the most major breakthroughs on the fact that uh, evolution is caused by magnetic reversals and and uh, extinction at the same time. And that is very significant. And at the same time, we have the creation and destruction of massive cultures worldwide. And this is being hidden from us for a reason, because those that are the controllers that are controlling us right now are losing their control. And as the magnetosphere weakens, Rex, you and I and Ra, we're becoming more uh, telepathic. We're becoming more communal. We, we can, we re realize that what I'm saying is truth. And the reason we're here is to get to the bottom of it. And they're scared. Yeah, man. What a, let's talk about the red and blue Kachina now. This is fascinating because the red and blue Kachina is talked about in Hopi prophecy that um, we'll see those in the sky. And some people have thought that they could be connected to the return of planet X, um, the nemesis, a, a, a brown dwarf star. And we have seen some amazing locations of petroglyphs. We've talked to some amazing elders and different tribes and they haven't told us that the red and blue Kachina is Mars and Venus. Um, but Diamond and I were having this conversation the other day on the way back from a, a really cool experience we had um, with, with the Zuni uh, elder and some just wonderful people. And so I see the red and blue Kachina as being the battles that were taking place between Mars and not necessarily battles, but Mars and Venus there's all these stories like love stories about Mars and Venus and Dumazid and Inanna and how they loved and cared for each other. And then they had these, you know, trials and tribulations and they fell out of love and they had the lovers quarrel. And that seems to be some kind of connection with Venus and Mars having maybe problems with the orbits or like what took place? Did, does Saturn 
get close to Jupiter. And at that point, Saturn is a, a much larger body. It's a star. It's activated. And it starts getting closer to Jupiter. So they start to battle. And then <coughs> somehow Venus gets pulled out of Jupiter. And people on Earth are watching this take place. And so Mars and Venus for a while are in harmony with Saturn then. And then somehow they break away. And then Venus comes towards Earth. And then Venus gets called things like Medusa because of all the plasma discharge and lightning bolts. And is that what created the Grand Canyon and the canyon, the the Mariner, the valleys Marineris on Mars, which is a giant version of the Grand Canyon? Your thoughts? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I could agree to agree to agree on everything. But what what we should glean from what you just said is that this process took a very long time. And, and what we've gleaned from speaking to elders uh, at, in the Zuni Nation and Hopi and uh, the Navajo Nation, they, ha they have so many kachinas, so many. And in order to have that many kachinas, and, and just in that one cave with the paintings we saw, the last place we were at the Zuni uh, Pueblo, oh my goodness, what a blessing it was to be able to be allowed to see that. Because that will be ruined. I mean, it's it's just so fragile. And this is the actual information that is purposely being destroyed. So no one can know about it. Now, these Kachinas are telling a saga that probably happened over eons, in my opinion. Hundreds of years. Probably almost a thousand years or more of what occurred during the breakup of that Saturnian potentially, if we're, if we're going to go with the Thunderbolts project, um, you know, we have the planets aligned and we're with the Saturnian sun and we just entered our solar system now sometime like 50,000 years ago. What we're looking at is petroglyphs starting because think about it, Rex. Think about all the rock art. All right. If we go back to the oldest rock art and some of your earliest podcasts is the Lion Man, right? That's like what is that, like seven years old, maybe a million views and other things with a million views that are that old. And and so the, the cave art that we know is almost 50,000 years old, the oldest cave art. And it's exquisite and it's astronomical, it's astrological. And at the same time, we have petroglyphs in Aboriginal Australia that they're claiming from these caves. Some of them that mining companies are destroying now are 47, 50,000 years old, the same age. They're the same double eyeballs. They're the same giant uh, petroglyphs that we have seen in some of the most hidden canyons here in the Southwest that are considered to be 9,000 years old. Okay, so, and then Anthony Parad comes into the, to the equation and he's showing us that these are plasma discharge events. The only way to get these types of events, it's, it wouldn't just be from a, a solar flare or a proton event from the sun, that's just not possible. Like the Carrington event, Rex, if during the Carrington event, there were these uh, dancing uh, stick men in the sky and we saw Jacob's Ladder, we would know about it, right? We know a lot about the Carrington event. People wrote about it in newspapers. All that happened on the Carrington event is the sky glowed red in Cuba and people could read their newspapers at night. Oh, and then a couple of people got electric shock that were doing uh, telegraph machines. So that was the Carrington event. Okay, what we're talking about is the Carrington event times a hundred, maybe a thousand minimum to get this type of stuff dancing above the northern and the southern pole. And because it was recorded in Australia, it had to be dancing around the South Pole. And because it was recorded in North America, it had to be dancing around the North Pole. The same exact figures. And we're talking about all these figures you're, sh you're showing here which is why they're recorded worldwide. What's more unique is that you can actually move towards the poles and look at the same petroglyphs and transfer the fact that if they were emanating from the pole in the north and you went towards the north equator, that they would be seeing less of the image. And that's exactly what the petroglyph shows. That's how beautiful this explanation is. It must be true. It's beyond Occam's So, so just to clarify, just yeah. to clarify... Real quick, real quick, just to clarify though. So for those of the, that are just joining us, what would cause 
this massive Jacob's ladder or this massive anomaly or this dancing stick man in the sky? What would create that if not for a solar flare? It couldn't be a solar flare, in my opinion. It would have to be celestial bodies in close proximity in our solar You're system. You're muted. Okay. Uh, I apologize. So what it would, I mean, it could be a solar flare, but it could have to be a proton event like a hundred times larger than the Charlemagne event. I don't think that's going to do it because the Carrington event didn't do it. I don't think the Charlemagne event's going to do it, but what could do it, Rex, is a planetary body in close proximity moving by us, like the breakdown of the Saturn system, right? So if you have Venus and Mars and Earth moving by each other, for some reason in close proximity, those magnetic fields are going to interact so amazingly that you get static electric shock. You know what it's like. Think about it in a small scale. In October, you run around in your slippers and you touch someone. Boom. And that this, that's, the, that's what you would need, the boom. And then it would electrify a rope and you could get this effect. <clears throat> you could also get the effect of carving the Grand Canyon and Valles Marineris at the same time. So that might be, in my opinion, a very early big event. And that subsequent smaller events produce similar figures in the sky and that this is the history that's been collected and passed down time immemorial which is resulting into more recent glyphs that are more anthropomorphic like a turtle here instead of the actual stickman stone <coughs> i've seen that turtle in uh in arizona and new mexico i think and then here's some more. And if you look at the turtle man, it essentially, and like right here, it says Southwest US, the second one over that uh, is a circle with legs and a head. That looks like it could be a planet as you're describing a planet that is getting really close and the discharge that it is presenting combined with the atmospheric conditions. That's what people see. They turn it into an anthropomorphic figure. One day they could, you know, maybe something, you know, they're, they're walking <laughs> around. Uh, in their oh, fields, they're working, hunting or gathering or doing their thing. And then all of a sudden, this lightning bolt just zaps them and, or people close to them from this anomaly and wipes out 50 square well, miles or something. And they were just right there watching it. They're like, man, I need to give a sacrifice. I guess I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Maybe my creator's mad at me. Look what just well, happened. You know, think look, about the things that are going to go through your mind. Well, look, Rex, this is what I really think it is. And it, it, it's... It's a long scale process. And if you don't have enough money to buy like some of the original works of like uh, Flare Star and some of the amazing Electric Universe works uh, by some of the authors, then you're never going to get to the bottom of it. But like, can we go back to the last slide? I, I really want to look at that one. Because if we're really talking about the com polar configuration, um, I'm just waiting for it to come up a real good one. There it is. And just come down on it and bring it into view. There it is. So if we're looking at the experiment simulation derived geometry here in the top left, the middle picture here would be the, po it's gone. Where did it go? Okay. It's gone. <laughs> you must be a couple seconds behind me. Let me, um, yeah, I this want, one. I just, I want the, mock-up geometry so i'm like yeah there it is experimental simulation derived geometry and you can see on the the right two pictures in the in the top left here or the middle basically the middle of the screen uh what the suspected result is and this is coming from the los alamos experiments right but if if we're talking about the polar configuration you're going to have saturn venus Mars and the Earth all in a perfect line and they're all going to be connected by that white string in the middle. But while we're ripping apart, where did it go? It says Google now. <laughs> all right, we're back here. Yeah, if we, it, it's, if there. we it's there. Yeah, if we were ripping apart here, this bottom cup in the middle picture or the right picture, this cup would be what was 
being pulled off the top of the earth. So this is what it would look like at the North Pole. And then this rod would extend from the North Pole up to Mars with the toroid or Venus, and then Mars with the upper part of the stickman stone extending to Saturn. So as it pulled apart from Saturn, connected to our Earth, this is the plasma discharge effect we would get during the tear apart of the polar configuration. Now, this is would have to be very long ago. And based on, because there's no way that Lasco Cave could be painted until we pull apart from the Saturn configuration, because there would be no visibility of space. We would have no idea that there was planets or stars before we were ripped out of our plasma sheet. Because in the polar configuration, we would be in a purple dawn. It would, there would be no sunrise or sunset. There would be no seasons. We would be traveling through space in a constant, warm, perfect greenhouse environment extending forever, like all of geologic time, which would allow 800 foot trees and the, and the dinosaurs to happen and things like that. But that's all recently ended, which is why humans shouldn't be on earth because this is not our earth. We used to live in the purple dawn and now we are exposed to a new sun, which gives us cancer. We have to wear clothes and it sucks because it gets cold and hot and so on and so forth. But back in the olden days, <laughs> before we got, I have a theory on that. I have a theory on that. <laughs> Good. Hold on. Hold on. I got, yeah, right. I got a theory about that. Maybe it's not as much the sun as it is the sun combined with certain elements in the environment that we didn't have in the environment naturally thousands of years ago or hundreds of years ago. For example, what about all the fluoride and chlorine and all the additional elements that are in the water? And what about all the stuff you're putting on your uh, skin? Could there be a connection there? I don't know. I'm just wondering. I'm going to go with the mindset of that cosmic radiation that's coming in. It's turning me into like Superman. It's turning me into Spider-Man. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry. Back to you. <laughs> well, no, I think that uh, we're Tyler's really... like, okay, you know, <laughs> no, we're on to something. And uh, it's just like hundreds of people, independent researchers, we're all putting the pieces together and it's coming together, except it's been suppressed for so long. Now that the internets and the interwebs are out, they're trying to suppress that. So they're trying to dumb down anything we actually put together to make sense. Clearly, they don't want us to know what the reality is because whoever the powers that be are and the uh, secret societies and the ancient schools, they know something that we don't know. But it's in my opinion that all of us will know the truth at some point. And you and I know the truth. And the truth is that this is not the world uh, that you and I should be living in. This is a controlled paradigm by higher levels. And we're probably have been genetically manipulated, but the cycle is its own enemy. And it's, and we're entering uh, the time when we can fight back doing nothing but spreading the truth. It's not about war. It's not about hatred. It's not about battle. It's about truth. And that comes by sending love, you know, being the change you want to see and doing the things we've been doing, yo. And that's why we're here, bro. That's right, man. <laughs> and I think that we need to take another uh, field trip soon and uncover some new, like when the weather gets a little bit better, we need to go back out to the Grand Canyon, and I've got some new information about the Grand Canyon. Oh, and dude, you got to see this before we go. I want to get your take on this. Well, no, this came I, from whoa, whoa. a. Uh, no, I got a better place than the Grand Canyon. I have a place that is about fourteen hours off road that almost no human goes to. It's uh, east of the canyon, south and east of Grand Canyon. We can go there this winter. And it has uh, about 50,000 petroglyphs that can only be reached after a 40-hour off-road ride. And you have the vehicle, and we have the vehicle, and let's do it. When? Tomorrow? 
No, let's give when it a couple. Where can we go? We got a plan. That's planning because we got a plan to be in there and stay in there for two or three days, camp, eat, live, and then get out. Dude, we got like all the stuff that I've been collecting is to go do something like that. I am ready to roll. That sounds fantastic. The sooner, the better. Let's yeah. do it. Okay. Yeah. And it's not, and it's not, it's not the Grand Canyon. So we can't drown. Bonus. Big time. <laughs> right on, man. Well, uh, magnetic reversal news is hopping. Oppenheimer ranch project is hopping and you're on so many different platforms. So just send me all the links so I can put in the video description box. I'm going to put this into like two or three different parts. Cause we touched on several subjects. And I think this is a, a, a really great presentation, man. You bring some, you're entertaining and you're um, educational at the same time. And that's, what's cool. Well, the fact that the fact that I'm uh, entertaining is a detriment to me because a lot of people don't take me seriously. And when they don't know the high level of education that I have or the, or or the research that I've done over the last three decades, it's deflating to say the least when I'm treated as a charlatan or a shill or a schmuck when in complete reddits with that are controlling hundreds of thousands of viewers of information are telling me that the information I'm spilling is conspiracy theory and unfounded. And I'm like, um, no, it's peer reviewed from a 2019 paper and it's completely legitimate. And it's what any paleoclimatologist believes today. If they read the literature, I mean, this is how, but, but this is not new Rex. It literally takes 30 years for the lame stream to catch up to the actual science. So once a paradigm shift occurs, which is what's happening now, they won't know it until 2050 or won't care. So that's the situation we're in. Age of Aquarius, man. So maybe things are going to get a little bit, maybe instead of 30 years, it's going to be 30 days. They're going to step it up. We can only hope. People like you. People like you are doing it. So it's out there. The information is out there. It's just a different platform to get information. And the Borg will not assimilate me. Abracadabra. Cool. Yeah. All right, Diamond. Love you, brother. Thank you. Happy New Year. And let's get together soon. Yeah, I love you. Let's do something real soon. And that's boom.